Hi guys, it's Scott here again, and in this, the third and final decision-making video, we're going to introduce you to four different types of formal decision-making techniques. So by this stage, we've done all the hard work. We've generated our tables with our requirements and our specifications and our weightings, and all that is left is to process through that and figure out which of these options that we're looking at is going to be the best to continue on into a detailed design. So we've got four different techniques that we're going to step you through in this video. The first one is the dominant criterion method. Basically this just means you look at what is the dominant criterion and if that is highly dominant in that it is the most important and the other criterions below it aren't very important, then you just select on that one. It's pretty straightforward. The second method is the successive dominant criteria method. In this method we eliminate the worst option on the most dominant criteria and then go and eliminate another option on the second most important criteria etc until we're left with just one option. The third method is the dominant and threshold criteria. So in this technique we actually increase our specifications a little bit higher. We lift the threshold of acceptability so that we eliminate some of the options and then we select on the dominant. And the final option is the composite criterion method. This is quite a common method, and what we're going to do is we're going to multiply our weightings for each of our criteria by the scores that we've given them based on the values for those specifications. And we're going to compare the different concepts on the basis of that sum to figure out which one is the best one and to determine if it is significantly better than the other options. So the first example we're going to look at is the use of the dominant criterion method. So we can use this method if, and generally only if, one of the requirements dominates. So if we look at these four peg examples, and we bring up uh, a table that we've developed with rankings in this case, we can see that each of these pegs is ranked on the different performance requirements, aesthetics, safety, etc. But we'll notice that down the bottom here, low cost or cheap, is very very highly weighted with a weighting of 12 as compared to the performance, long life, aesthetics etc which are down at 3, 2 and 1. So in cases where you have one criteria which is dominating in terms of the weightings then it doesn't really matter how well each of these options score on the secondary uh, weighted requirements whichever one comes out on top in the most important one down here is going to be the one that you end up choosing regardless of the method so you might as well just cut to the chase. So in this case this one, the yellow peg here is, is rated the cheapest in this circumstance so due to that weighting we're going to choose that one and eliminate the other options. Pretty simple. So the second method we call the successive dominant criteria method. So in this method we take our most dominant criteria and we eliminate the worst of our options based on this criteria. We then take the next most important criteria and we eliminate the worst of the options on those criteria until we're left with uh, only one option at the end. So taking this example again and we've got a ranking table again, we look at the most important criteria and the dominant one which is weight and we're going to go and eliminate the lowest ranked one which is the blue peg in number four because it's unlikely that that's going to come out on the best option so we're going to eliminate this one here we then go and find the next most important criteria which is strong grip at a weighting of three and we're going to eliminate the worst option that we have in our remaining three choices so that uh, grey peg on the end with the fourth rating in terms of strong grip, that's going to go. We're now left with two options and so we go to the next most important weighting which is aesthetics which is weighted at two and we're going to eliminate the worst one there which in this case is the red peg so the red peg disappears and we're left with the yellow peg as our final choice given this uh, selection method. This brings us to the third method that we're going to explain to you, which is the dominant and threshold criteria method. So how we do this is, in order to eliminate some of our options, and I'll just bring them up again, we've got our four pegs, 
and previously we, we had a specification which was here and all of these four pegs met those specifications previously and so they're considered possible options in our solutions. So what we're going to do to eliminate some of them rather than go through the weightings, we're going to go and slightly lift some of these specifications to make them a little bit more harsh and hopefully eliminate some of these potential candidates. So we've done that here. You'll notice that our most important criterion, which was cost, we haven't lifted any thresholds or set any thresholds on that. We're going to keep that up our sleeve so that if we lift these other th thresholds, if these other ones come up here and we have a couple options left at the end, then we can choose the cheapest one. So let's start with the first threshold over here. So we've lifted that up to 35 newtons of pull-off force now, which means that this option here, the yellow peg, doesn't quite meet that anymore when it used to pass so that gets eliminated and also the grey peg on the end gets eliminated because that's also 28 newtons so not quite good enough now under this new threshold that we've we've implemented. If we look at long life we've lifted that from 200 to 400 cycles and so now the grey peg would also be eliminated on that basis and if we take a look at the aesthetics, the blue peg is just not cutting it anymore. It's 2 out of 5, we've lifted our threshold to 3 out of 5, and so that one drops out. If at this stage we had more than one option left, then we would go and select on cost, but because we only have the red peg left, that would be our choice using this selection method. The fourth and final decision-making method we're going to introduce you to is the composite criterion method. This method is used quite commonly even in um, places such as Choice Magazine to come up with a composite score which takes into account all of the different requirements and the different weightings that we put on them to figure out which is going to be the best on, on the basis of all of these factors. And the way we do that is to take the score that we've given each of these concepts. So these are the scores here. They were developed, you will remember, based on the values for these different requirements. So we've got a score here which is non-dimensional. It's between 1 and 10. And we're going to multiply these scores by the weightings. So the weightings are our level of importance for each of these different requirements. If we multiply them together and we sum up each of these numbers for the two concepts, then at the end of this should, we should have a good balanced view of which one is going to come out on top. So let's do that. So here are our scores times our weightings, and if we work through the first row, you'll see that we have five, a weighting of 5 here multiplied by 4 gives us our 20, and the weighting of 5 multiplied by 10 gives us our 50. Stepping through the next one, a weighting of 5 times a score of 5 is 25, and a weighting of 5 times a score of 1 equals 5. For long life, we have a weighting of 2, a score of 3 for the first option which gives 6 and then a score of 8 for the second option which gives us 16. Similar story for aesthetics, 3 times 4 equals 12 and 3 times 8 equals 24. And finally down for low cost we have a weighting of 10 times by a score of 5 equals 50 and the weighting of 10 times a score of 7 gives us 70. We can now total up the composite scores for each of these two possible options, giving us 113 for option number one and 165 potentially for option number two. At this stage you might think, great, well, option number two here gave 165 and that's, that's more than 113, so clearly this one is a better device. And that may be so, but we should always do a, a little bit of a check to make sure that the difference between the scores of these two options is actually significant. It's big enough for us to confidently say that one of them is better or worse than the other, and we'll show you how to do that now. So in this final step, we want to check the sensitivity of our final composite criteria results. The first step in this process is to calculate a value that we're going to call D. And we calculate this value D by taking the largest weighting that we've used and multiplying it by the smallest increment in the scores that we've allocated. So if we look at our weightings table here, we see that the largest weighting used in this example is 10. And if we go over to our columns of scores, we can see that we've been ranking on a scale of 1 to 10 and we're using whole number increments. So our smallest increment of score is going to be one unit. 
when you think about this, you might imagine that this is our kind of potential error. So if something fell not quite perfectly on the number, maybe it was 3.5, we would we may have given it a 4 instead, or if it was just under 4.5, we've come down to 4. So this gives us a good range of that error, and this is what the smallest increment basically tells us. So if we take these numbers and multiply them together, we get the result of 10 uh, for this value of D. And then how we figure out whether our result is significant or not is to compare this value of D to the difference between the various options that we're trying to select between. And in this case, uh, 10 is actually quite a small gap compared to the gap between 113 and 65, which is 52. So therefore, because that gap between the two options is bigger, we can say that this difference is actually significant. We're not down in the error region. And so we can confidently say that one of these concepts is significantly better than the other. That's the final video in the decision-making series. Thanks for watching.